spending so much time in icu is quite satisfactory at the end of the day rather than like slightly more rather than in the ot i think um, you can cover the medicine aspects from all of the marrow that you have and probably go on with some up to date articles and perfect out your understanding with regard to the recent advances which you have and even the protocol some of which are unique to critical care many things in critical care are scoring and things like that so which you tend to somehow forget if you yeah. don't like do it multiple times or if you don't do it just before the day of the exam or something that way so everything of yours that covered and so all of the graphs that they asked and most of the x-rays that they put up were somehow like things really? which you kind of mentioned somewhere in between your videos most of it is rest and then you have some amount of pediatrics like you said medicine is an overlap most of the places and critical care to a slight or greater extent dealing with most of the emergencies so for girls what i can say is if your heart really needs it like for the reason of being satisfied in that profession then uh, there is nothing much to put you at a stop welcome one and all to another session with the topper and this is again a very special session as far as neat ss sessions neat ss exam and results and sessions have been concerned i think this is the second session that i am doing the first of our sessions was with the nephrology topper praveen and this time around we have a very very special guest with us uh, we've been doing lots of interviews i think uh, ever since we started off with these inas stoppers but for the first time we are I'm interviewing a girl so we've had all these stoppers all these stoppers were boys so that is a change second all the toppers whom we have interviewed were from a medicine background so we were talking about medicine then dm toppers medicine then dm toppers so for the first time we are actually interviewing somebody from an anesthesia background okay so we have a person who is actually a carelite but not in any course in kerala she is basically got an anesthesia background which is again very not not very very common to see and from anesthesia she is now switching over to critical care and as basically just cracked the exam big time and scored rank one so officially ranks are announced today and she is ranked one i'm very very proud to actually share that with you this interview is uh, more about getting to know the person more than getting to know the person i think it's going to be a very important interview for students from anesthesia background who have lots of doubts as to whether to continue as consultants in anesthesia or to actually switch over to critical care again lots of doubts with respect to how to prepare and how to get into the medical side because they have done something which is not basically got a medical base so how to switch over then how to actually use the app and how to actually get in touch with medicine pediatrics and all that so lots and lots of questions to actually ask nasneen but at the outset welcome and a huge congrats from me and from the entire team of mark thank you sir <laughs> so my first question we'll actually start off with a very very basic question that is during your anesthesia in your beginning early days of anesthesia uh, anesthesia is a subject which we have very very little exposure at an undergrad level okay so you have done your undergrad yes. mission in madurai medical college which is top college but still i think we'll be having very minimal exposure So, what was your experience with anesthesia in the early part? What did you think of anesthesia when you took it as a subject before, and then after joining, did it actually match? How was the subject per se? Sir, uh, I was not a person who actually took anesthesia like without knowing anything about it, because uh, even in Madurai, we had an institute of anesthesia, so yeah. we were actually posted under them under IRCU and all of it. Yeah. so okay. i think procedure wise we were given uh, like decent chances for interns and everything and i had my most favorite seniors in anesthesia so that was the admiration factor that i had so that was a strong base and i have spoken to a couple of people who are doing residency as well as who are consultants post anesthesia to know their work profile so i chose a speciality like by finding out how comfortable they were as consultants also post pg so the only drawback most of them kept telling me was the part of recognition and i think it was quite okay with my character so i did not have that problem sir so the other way of it the work pattern and the way they deal with patients and everything i think it was fine sir so that's how i took it and initially i had this fear whether i'm quite procedural and whether i would fit into the procedure background or the quick decision making that you get to make i had a fear but uh, my department was quite supportive sir they gave us a lot of chances and gradually we built on and i think in the middle of first year i started to feel really comfortable and uh, that's how i kept going sir going how how important it is to have good hand skills uh, is it like uh, we can build on it very important on it? sir 
No, yeah, I'm asking um, you, I... natural or can we actually build on it and actually make it better? Or do we need to be naturally having good hand skills to come to anesthesia? No, no, sir, not naturally. Because uh, I think everything comes with practice. And that's the main wrong wrong notion that most of them keep in mind that they're not intrinsically good in lines and stuff like that. But uh, I think, sir, it's quite... Uh, like everything comes with practice, sir. If you have that much of exposure and caseload, I think it just comes with practice, sir. There's nothing to be good at procedures. Maybe, I don't know, there's a 10 percent factor, but the remaining is all about how many cases you would see and how many patients you would touch, basically. So if you have a center that gives you a decent amount of caseload, it wouldn't be a problem, sir. Like, a that's problem. how I believe. Great. And how close is anesthesia to medicine and how far off it is from medicine? Is it, There are so many people who, who don't get medicine. <laughs> institutes that they really want so they always ask uh, us genetic anesthesia isn't it very close to medicine sir, it isn't a substitute to medicine definitely okay. i think anesthesia is more about the basic subjects like you got to be good at your physiology and uh, even your anatomy to an extent rather than thinking that it is solely medicine it's basically an integration of uh, physiology and other aspects so if you're very yeah. good with your first year subjects i think you're a in candidate or if you love them then probably especially physiology i would keep like yeah. saying that and yes. so medicine you need to know definitely some amount of medicine before you actually deal with anesthesia and it goes like probably there is a turn at the management level like the medicine takes a turn by speaking about the updates regarding management and they go that way but anesthesia takes a turn by the anesthetic considerations and how do you take up an ot so up to that the pathophysiology and stuff i think it's quite matchable but definitely not a substitute so you need to be an intensive person who need to be a little bit more active, I think, if you want to be an OT and that drive, because some days could be like monotonous, the other day could be like completely a top case. So it switches. So it's not very relatable, but somewhat, maybe there's some similarity at the end of the day, but I wouldn't call it a substitute, sir. Okay, great. That's nice. Uh, my next is like more of a doubt. Like if you look at the number of anesthesia, post-anesthesia people who were writing super specialty entrance exams three, four years ago, there were hardly, hardly few number of people. Okay. They, there weren't many people who were attempting. Now the number of anesthesia PGs and post-anesthesia guys, girls who are attempting the entrance exam, the number is actually increasing year by year. Why is it that now every year we are having more number of anesthesia people actually trying for the entrance? Previously, we were not seeing that. Is there any problem in continuing with a consultant in anesthesia or like is it just out of interest or what do you feel? Like more number of people are coming into it, which means that more people are wanting to specialize. Uh, is there any particular reason behind that? Sir, among the friends that I got to deal with, uh, I think it was a mixed crowd. Some of them were very happy with the general anesthesia because you get to see all the kind of cases. Yeah. But there were some kind of people who had that intense drive to get into the cardiac part of anesthesia or the neuro yeah. part of anesthesia. Some of them who love critical care. Some of them like pain and palliative, sir. I think yeah. it's the slight change of awareness also that people want to do something one step more when there is an opportunity and probably thinking that in the long run sir i'm very sure in the next 10 years everybody is going to take a super speciality in almost all the branches yeah, so maybe people are getting more far-sighted too so i think these could be the two reasons sir. when did you actually have a plan so like when you were going on with your course at what point did you decide that yes i too have to study something more and then how did you come to this whole point of i will have to prepare like this etc Sir, we are uh, in uh, my college, that is Bangalore Medical College, the way they post uh, PGs in ICU is in a one, one is to one ratio, like one medicine PG and one anesthesia PG. So after our rounds, we have a lot of time to basically discuss and uh, reach a conclusion with regard to both the resuscitative aspect as well as the management aspect. And definitely, sir, there's going to be lacunae like crossover because there is going to be certain procedures that the medicine part would want to explore in ICU and we also would have certain management part which we could learn from them. So there's yeah. an active discussion. So okay. that I felt, sir, cannot be dealt only with one speciality person. You need to have an extra edge. And sir, critical okay. care per se is a place like wherein you need to do things sooner. So for that, you yeah. need to know more, sir. So that kind of triggered the factor. Okay. And when, when was this like you were fixed on it early on or you decided this very late into the course? 
um sir uh, i was uh, in like the continuous postings that i got in icu was in my start of third year so that is when actually i really started developing the interest like almost three i mean three weeks we have a continuous posting so okay. that's when i really realized that spending so much time in icu is quite satisfactory at the end of the day rather than like slightly more rather than in the ot so that's when the main uh, trigger started sir and i seriously started looking at it and sir yeah. when you realize that you don't know something in that area then you i'm the kind of a person who wants to little bit explore there so that kind of triggered so that's how it yeah. went sir you will like, start preparing them like you had this idea so third year was kind of like in medicine generally third year is very tough like with respect to our final exams and having to pass the exam and stuff. so most people leave it at that point it's only after their results come and they pass and they are happy that they start was it the same case yeah. with you or you studying in your final year uh, no sir critical care is just one subject like one paper for us and over there uh, it's the basic of critical care which you need to get through so yeah. over there there was no point in basically exploring more of it and wasting time when you have a theory exam in front of you so i was also like the normal crowd who did not do much in my third year so i waited and i also wanted to explore like one year post my pg to see whether i would be a happy an anesthesia consultant or whether the drive is still there because i feel residency is too short to decide everything about it because i didn't want to do dm if i was not genuinely interested so i wanted to explore that aspect also slightly yeah so like after your course you've been doing residency now and i think it's almost like one and a half years since you passed out so this whole yeah, passage yes, this whole passage you just tell me <laughs> from when did you very seriously start preparing what kind of plan did you make whom did you ask before making the plan and then how did you execute that plan so we want to know in detail because i think there are so many anesthesia people who are anesthesia post anesthesia students who are watching this because they are very very interested now and they have a lot of confusions medicine people don't have much confusion i know that so, <laughs> so the thing is uh, post co i was the covid batch sir so i was really frustrated so what i was looking forward was to definitely sir and that time critical care would be definitely only covid so yeah. i just wanted to explore how my residency goes along with covid also so first 6 months i didn't do much i just wanted to explore out and really think over whether this is where i want to do but i did write the exam which came immediately one month after my pass out without much of preparation sir just to know the pattern because i did not come across any senior or anybody relatable who could give me a detailed executive plan like this is how questions come from each part and probably asking that to a medicine person is quite not very relatable because you wouldn't get everything of what extra i should cover so i thought okay i'll only write the exam and probably sort out like how it goes and i just knew that it was just a combination of critical care medicine res respiratory medicine and pediatrics that's all what i knew so once i wrote the exam i started to understand that the critical care that you saw in anesthesia was just the superficial part of it and there is a deep depth so you have to actually go into the depths mm. and medicine also has to be solid to basically get through and emergencies in almost every field like obs yeah. surgical emergencies trauma everything is a part antibiotics are a part so that was like an eye opener for me because i was probably the person who was writing the exam to decipher like what pattern are they actually going through yeah, so yeah. Yes, so so after that six months, I did write down the questions and uh, keep it aside. But then, uh, after six months to my residency, I started realizing that COVID is not the ultimate critical care, and there are other options opening up gradually. And I really started enjoying ICU again as I kept continuing as SR also. And it is in the later half, like say, sir, after February, that I genuinely started to decide, like, how do I go about it? So yeah. initially, I knew my uh, level of critical care is just the superficial part of it. So uh, the one to one and a half months that I had after Feb, I just took a peripheral read, not just peripheral, but I just read the textbook to find out if I could get enough matter. But then I realized that you have to go a little bit more conceptually, and you need to have a bit more basics because most of most of the critical care textbooks they discuss about the critical care aspect of it in detail. So you do need a base. So yes. I was in search of that base, which can basically give me a complete understanding with minimal time, actually, because exams were presumed to be earlier admission. So yeah. that way is how I came to Maro, and uh, I started exploring the options in Maro. Yeah. So I was uh, super excited did, because. What order did you keep watching Maro videos from? Where did you start? Like which order? So did you I watch? started with Medicine Straight. <laughs> It was just medicine that I started, and I knew that I was weak in rheumatology. and gastro because there was no overlap of those topics in anesthesia for sure so those were my initial areas sir so when i started covering them i understood that uh, i can do it in that phase actually 
So Did I started to do. How a MB, MBB student would watch for PG like everything in depth, every nook and corner, making notes, or you just like read through? I mean, just watch through that way. Sir, in general, I am not that person who makes so much of notes. Okay. Uh, I would rather watch the video once, probably in a one point five x speed, and uh, jot down only the gist of it, like whatever I feel is extremely important and which I wouldn't be able to recall. And my revision strategy is also to watch the video in two point five x or three x, sir, and then go through the same gist which I make. I am not that extensive taker of notes, sir. I am somehow comfortable with the other end of it. Were you were you feeling so, comfortable, or were you feeling that okay, you are say suppose you are learning malabsorption, malabsorption, and I think I have nothing to do with each other. So when you are learning it, uh, all, you did you feel bored, or you were so motivated? Not. Yourself? No, sir. I was uh, so from the beginning itself. I did not have any aversion towards medicine, so I just took it gradual. I I, I knew that I had to anyway read it. There was no, uh, there was no issue, sir. I was okay in covering them. I knew it was required. Do you take like more time with respect to these things, or you were like able to cover it very quickly? Um, sir, uh, time in the sense not very quickly because probably if I would compare myself with a medicine person, then definitely I would be. Okay. Um, like time. not yeah, yeah a little more time but um, sir i think we have to push yourself there's no other That's option no, no, no. i'm asking what i'm asking the entire medicine taken together like up just the general medicine part of it like how long did you spend to get a grip on general medicine on the whole Sir, initially it was a little difficult because I would take a little time to uh, sink into the fact that I'm gonna like learn medicine, and uh, yeah. again it's the same loop. Yeah. But gradually I picked up, sir. I was able to watch like around six to seven videos in a day, even with with my SR ship. I was quite comfortable with the way the app is structured, basically. And I told you like I don't take so much detailed notes. I would rather prefer watching the video once again rather than making notes and just recall on my own on varied occasions like wherever I am. So because of that, uh, seven to uh, seven videos decently I could cover within a day, sir. As time went on. Okay. And then what are the videos did you watch? Like the speciality videos, surgical videos, all that. Yeah, sir. Uh, when the exam actually got a uh, different pattern, uh, mm -hmm. I had already like done decently most yeah. of the medicine part. So then I knew that I was ready to explore the critical care aspects of uh, the SS app, like SS portions. So cardiology, there were definitely a lot of overlaps, sir. So I had to like go through a lot of topics like pacemakers, ICD. I mean the MI, definitely the whole of it, and the heart failure, um, and also like most of the videos, arrhythmias, AF. So all those videos were very much related to critical care, and I definitely that, needed to know all that. Which are discovered almost like twenty five, thirty percent of the critical care syllabus per se, because all that is basically yeah. critical care. What is discussed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So those sorting out was there, but then those in cardiac and sir so neuro also I have decently covered like GBS, myasthenia, most of those areas by Bishak sir, meningitis, encephalitis, stroke, yeah. all those areas were done sir. Even status epilepticus and all that. Even hepat sir, like hepatology also there was considerable overlap like between uh, ascites and uh, HRS, um, hepatopulmonary syndrome, hepatic encephalitis. They were all like very much yeah. needed in critical care and they had an ex like. They would also like listening to both of it would give me. So I told you I watch videos like twice. So I was okay in taking it and whatever were extra I would write down properly. Like, did you juggle up and study when you were watching medicine? You study only medicine or you would study anesthesia? No, 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 no. That's sir, anesthesia, I was kind of comfortable and I knew okay. that I don't have to like. Uh, so because hardly there were questions from sole anesthesia. Like last year, so I knew that if I kind of waste a lot of time, like so, I do not know whether the pattern is going to be the same like every year. But from my experience and the way I looked at it, I felt that whatever they asked in anesthesia was something which I could actually write with my three-year residency it's experience. MD knowledge is enough to answer. That. Yeah, sir, and even in the is that you read any books particularly that you that you would advise somebody to read apart from the videos. Uh, yes, sir. I think um, you can cover the medicine aspects from all of. The marrow that you have, and probably go on with some up-to-date articles, and perfect out your understanding with regard to the recent advances which you have, and even the protocols. Some of which are unique to critical care, especially topics like fluids and monitoring yeah. per se. There we need to have a lot of grip, sir. Electrolytes, all those kind of topics, antibiotics, infectious diseases. So those are the areas wherein you need to have some amount of extra preparation, like on the other side. Yeah. So that is what most people who prepare uh, for critical care when medicine people also when you ask them they say the critical care is too much of syllabus to cover 
like if you want to become a specialist in rheumatology this there are 15 chapters to cover some more we can study but critical care is like how much we have to prepare we ourselves are not clear it is there in this subject it is there in that subject it is there in this subject so many people say sir i think it um, like how i approached this problem this was there last year because when i wrote i was not able to understand like from where exactly are the questions coming up but then what i realized was it's just a combination of all the emergencies which you can put together in almost every specialty even dermatology so that's how they take it so sir my first work was to basically write down in a nutshell like what are the topics that i'm actually going to cover from and i was not really bothered like from the source per se like if it was a book or if it was some kind of an article or if there was a marrow video then i was super happy so that's how it went sir uh, first step was definitely to make a syllabus like which you're actually going to read like obs you need obstetric emergencies you need surgical emergencies you need trauma so all of that there are there could be a lot of areas which you could miss out if you are just randomly studying so how much time did you take for that to get the syllabus in shape sir uh, the way i made it was by uh, combining like a few set of uh, like uh, mcq books that i had those were my main sources and my uh, previous exam experience i think i took around 6 to 7 hours to basically do that yeah. and uh, i did it quite early sir so it did not like actively take any of my preparation time so that was my base and i would just go around the same topics to make sure that all the areas are somehow done sir yes and uh, towards the end like what was your revision strategy would like you would just uh, sir, the confusion for many of the students this topics are so vast and syllabus is huge vast. sir uh, last 20 days is when i actually kept for sole revision because the slight drawback that you have is um, unfortunately many things in critical care are scoring and things like that so which you tend to somehow forget if you yeah. don't like do it multiple times or if you don't do it just before the day of the exam or something that way So sir uh, what i did was i kind of categorized the topics which are a bit volatile to put it extremely into the middle of those 20 days so that i don't get panicked and also that i have decent time there so that i don't forget for exam yeah. the previous part of it i did the quite conceptual ones which you are really sure of and which you can actually revise and which you can be really confident and which you can probably skip on the day before the exam also like you know it since long time so that's how i went about it uh that 20 days is when i actually started my revision sir and i kept very little new topics to be stuffed in between because those were little um like new to me and i was really not sure whether i had to spend so much time on it so a new topic would be a very peripheral read just to make sure that if at all something comes i will be able to give a decent option that's it sir just through the experience of the paper how was the paper like was it according to your expectation how do you yeah, read actually Sir, uh, when I was preparing, I was little worried because this varied strategy and because I'm doing it all alone and I don't have a second opinion. I was a little confused, but somehow I thought anyway, topics are the same, so you have to go by reading all that you can. That's all what you can do. So it was a decent attempt, which was there at the back of my head. And uh, sir, when I saw the paper, I realized that it's a very conceptual kind of a paper wherein you have to be strong in your basics. so i really thought that the way i prepared kind of really helped me because most of the systemic pediatrics were also asked sir like there were questions on congenital adrenal hyperplasia yeah. uh, there were questions on kawasaki disease and there were questions on rickets so it was not that very critical care oriented paper per se so the way i kind of studied somehow i felt like it was more or less on the same track as to how the paper went on so uh, that's what i felt sir and there were too many questions from respiratory physiology yeah. and uh, resp per se so i had made sure that i wouldn't skip even the physiology videos of respiratory part so everything of yours i had covered and so all of the graphs that they asked and most of the x rays that they put up were somehow like things really? which you kind of mentioned somewhere in between your videos and yeah. even your infectious diseases i had like watched it with great interest sir and you had <laughs> mentioned a sentence like salmonella is a non lactose fermenter and that was like a question and i was like okay so that's how it went so i was very thrilled what like when the paper came and i was like okay so many intricate details did work so i was quite happy sir at the end of it so i think what i can also understood is that although we say this is critical care dm entrance exam This is actually a mixed bag that you're getting sitting in the exam hall. Some pediatrics, some micro, some medicine, some subject from here there, some critical care. It's like you need to have overall grounding. I think that's what is more important. 
yeah so most of it is rest and then you have some amount of pediatrics like you said medicine is an overlap most of the places and critical care to a slight or greater extent dealing with most of the emergencies sir that's how i understood from my previous year experience and how i modified the way i would go about this year so i did not take much of opinion sir yeah. and neither did i write so many competitive exams per se okay. i had a sub- separate uh, subscribed series of tests which were just 30 questions on each topic so i would just cover that for critical care and make sure that okay areas are covered so video would be enough but if i did not know anything in the test series then i knew that i had to check out an alternate source for completing the same so that's how i kept assessing so there wasn't anything extra no that's i think that's what is so special for the preparation you are so confident with yourself that you didn't want to take multiple opinions generally what no. happens to many of the students is that they themselves are not sure like whether i'm prepare, preparing right preparing right so then they go about trying to do something then that doesn't work then go to plan b plan c so they lose a lot of time you are not checking you know you are pretty happy that this is the way i can study i am going with that i think that's a very, very uh, so the way i kept a check on myself was with my own uh, graph like i had yeah. my own assessment sheets wherein i would actually yeah. check in like what am i doing at the end of a week so Oh. when i was reading textbook i kind of realized that it was just two chapters and neither am i able to solve any questions and i then realized that critical care is not something which you can read from only books and crack an exam because there's so many concepts coming into it yeah. so after one or two weeks of start of my preparation itself i kind of realized that it is a, a wrong thing to basically revise the textbook So exactly. probably your basics are strong so better to go through the high yielding materials and strengthen your questioning strategy rather than that was kind of a changing decision for me sir but then i realized that you don't get any one liners from any particular textbook it's that yeah. it's not that way so that's what that's what is the point uniformly said and that's what i am also reiterating again and again the reading the textbook is a futile exercise for a competitive exam you are a fool to actually read the textbook you read the textbook if you want to know something for your happiness for a competitive yeah. exam it's all about time so basically you try to go and watch something which somebody has done who would have definitely read this and 10 other textbooks so he would have already assimilated all that and he would have made basically collected all that and he would want to give the best points so you going in book is actually speaking not going to be of any major use yeah, okay so that, that is, is ex- that is is wonderful now one more question is like how would you plan to take your career forward now i just wanted to know that because your route is a little different from see most of the students who i have interviewed in fact everyone who i have interviewed have actually gone through my same track so i know what they are going to do what they have done everything is known to me it's just for the interview that you are asking but in your case <laughs> yes. the answer is actually a surprise because your route is different you come from a different background so how do you actually plan to take this forward so i'm definitely planning to take my dm critical care in one of the top most centers wherein i would have an extra edge on most of the procedures yeah. because op- case load what are your op- my options um, i would want to choose between tata memorial and uh, cmc vellore sir okay. so i am yet to decide on my final center with regard to the other concerns also but uh, sir what i'm looking forward is to learn something new in critical care because otherwise sir even as an anesthesia consultant i could get to work in any of the icu to learn the routine stuffs which I'd, i would have seen during my residency so that's not the edge that i wanted so to get the edge that i wanted i think i have to take a strong center and probably deal with it so system medical college is supposedly like from time immemorial when we have heard of this branch called critical care because dm critical care is something i think we have started to hear only for the last 10 years or so when i was doing yes. mbbs heard about this so the, from the time we have started to hear about dm critical care i think i think what we been hearing is cmc 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 critical you have to see that is the part that is the part we've been actually listening and also from the other side we've been hearing that my god this is the toughest dm to actually pursue the work is so tough and this is the toughest dm to pursue so have you ever thought of it that way like yes, critical sir. Uh, the uh, the main confusion i had regarding this was when i was dealing with covid because you do your in and out best and you don't get to see the same set of patients tomorrow because yeah. most of them would have not made it through the night so this was a big factor and i had a real big doubt that whether this emotional instability could be a reason as to why i cannot take forward this dm and that's why yes. that senior residency was there in my life so mm-hmm. i kind of spoke to multiple uh, consultants with regard to their opinion on the same yeah. and most of them kept telling me that this was something which was unique to covid and that's not how you actually judge the dm from 
uh, the covid level covid is there it we hope that it will go so do not decide with regard to just covid in hand and most of them had this opinion that definitely the residency life is going to be tough but then sir i think even if you want to do any residency in any of the best mm-hmm. colleges in india it is going to be tough yes, yes, so yes. so once you cross over that residency how are you actually as a consultant is what i wanted to look at so when i spoke to the consultants i really felt that it was more or less comparable because as an anesthetist if i would freelance the number of working hours that i would have and the workload that i would have as a critical care person is okay and i'm not somehow a person who is really afraid of the workload but if the shifts are fixed and if i can be free after that particular duration of the shift i think i'm comfortable sir and at the end of the day i have a satisfaction so that gives me a positive hope that i can pull through yeah yeah this is actually truly inspirational as it's like i think inspiration to everyone more so because like we are looking at the percentage of students who become successful in a super speciality exam it is very lopsided that most of them are actually boys you would have yourself noticed you look at the list of toppers so i think this is a huge inspiration so your word of advice to uh, the girls who are actually coming even more girls are now writing the entrance exam right like so definitely what do you uh, what do you feel right from 2009 you joined mbbs now if you see uh, what is your word of advice to to all these girls over there sir especially? what i can say is being a girl i mean and looking at the other girls the main drawback that happens with most of them is the parallel thinking that you have about different fields of your life like you keep thinking you you pretend to be studying but you actually keep thinking about something else <laughs> so yeah. i think that is what that you have to bring a control on and if you really want to pursue something i don't think that there needs to be a lot of confusion with regard to everything else sir like most of it does fit into place at the end of the day so for girls what i can say is if your heart really needs it like for the reason of being satisfied in that profession then uh, there is nothing much to put you at a stop and uh, like personal concerns are there but even then on a gross and there's no point in thinking about everything on the earth which you cannot change so if you want it you just go for it the others can wait is what great. i think sir exactly great great awesome and uh, finally like about practicing mcqs and giving exams prior to the original exam <laughs> is it there are few people who feel like now we are already at this level we need not be doing so much we've already come to maybe um, so many um uh, so the way i took mcqs was basically to see if i had the optimal uh, depth of knowledge in that particular area sir so i wasn't really time uh, oriented i did not fix like the same amount of time that i would get in neat or anything but my target was like roughly around 50 to 60 questions in a day so i would solve those 50 to 60 questions in around 30 minutes and then go through the answers with regard to that and if uh, there was a balance sir like if i felt that i was going too low then i would slightly increase my working i mean the theory area and come down on little mcqs and then again try solving so it wasn't really constant but definitely once in two days there was a check on the areas that i actually covered so i think that was decent because i didn't have any time lag but maybe solving like everything from basics oh. might not be required sir what about like knowing surgery how important is knowing surgery any bits and pieces of surgery sir, like surgical it? emergencies surprisingly they are important like you mm-hmm. uh, i mean uh, to name a few topics maybe i think uh, the peritonitis part of it the mesenteric yeah. ischemia the colonic ischemia all of it mm-hmm. fits into the emergency again colecystitis and okay. even appendicitis even they tend to priapism all that tends to fit yeah. into the emergency so okay. to like find out what any even the trauma sir because Uh, i think even spine trauma i gone to the extent of watching it from ortho so you My if you God. have a grip on what you need to watch i think you can go through i think if you write the neat pg entrance exam you may come top again i think you may come rank one <laughs> so this subsequent overlap but then there wasn't any other yeah, way so exactly. now again with most of the people who prepare especially girls they keep talking about this feeling low at multiple points and not able to get out from there so how was your family your support system to help you prepare such a long period of time right you are away from yeah. post, post again covid phase then again post md 1 and 1 half years so how was the support system sir i was emotionally kind of definitely wanting to have some kind of support so i decided that bangalore is not going to be the place where i'm going to prepare so the first thing that i did was to call up my husband and mother and yes. tell them that i need 3 months and what can be done <laughs> 
so my mom was very happy to come down because she had not seen me for one and a half years and uh, all of my convocation was also alone so she okay. was and like sadly there weren't any flights or modes to come back there it was a very yeah. tough time yeah. so she was just happy to come down and i was quite lucky because my husband and their families are also quite supportive because they know that okay if she wants to do it then there's no point in pulling her and try to so that kind of an understanding luckily i've got at both the places and my yeah. mother also knew that if i'm given the space and time that i need then it's fine so a little bit that way uh, they came down and then my like dad and my siblings also came down after a month so actually speaking i had a nice time sir studying yes, but then i had a very good emotional support like all throughout also so you were at no point in time like uh, you were feeling low and that you had to get up again and prepare because many times people actually go through a lot of lows sir uh, i would want to say that uh, it's better to give a whole hearted effort all the time because there's yeah. no point in giving half hearted efforts and getting frustrated like right. repeatedly so better exactly. is to decide if you want this you then go full on and then see what happens next exactly. so that is, that's one reason why i yeah. Yeah, sir. I did not give the institute exams also for the same reason because I was a little worried if their counselling and and if their interview sessions would come in between and then uh, mm-hmm. if I wouldn't make through, then that was a significant drop. So I really did not want to multi think, and uh, considering the probabilities of the institute exam as well, so I knew enough topics where to cover in the last also. So I did not keep a distraction. My aim was neat as is, and I just wanted to give it full heartedly. Rest I thought will be dealt with, like whatever it is. <laughs> so that's awesome see again because we are now interviewing these toppers what i understand is there are a lot of people who are like senior people who keep on coming and writing the exam come and write the exam every year as you said half heartedly every year get a rank which is not good enough to get a seat and make this just a habit the toppers are all what i understood you are the only person who is 2009 mbbs so all the other guys who interviewed are 2012 mm-hmm. mbbs are quite so, recent yeah, people sir so when we look at it people <laughs> preparing first time like you are prepared once actively that is your best performance maybe if you are not giving it full on next time when you when you repeat it may not be even as effective as this so just prepare so once one thing oh. wherein in neat pg also i was pretty sure that the effort is so because that's quite frustrating because you do your best and you don't get so it's better yeah. to put all that you want exactly. to do is what i personally feel exactly so. that is 100% because the more you actually write the entrance exam the lesser the chances that you are going to get So what we have actually found is, if you want to get it, you get it in your first or second attempt. Subsequent attempts have not been really great. Otherwise, you need to have huge motivation from within inside. Because most of the time, what happens is people get distracted. They get distracted due to ten other things: study for five days, not study for another five days. Then again, study, not study, juggle back here and there, to and fro. So that is probably, I think, one reason why many people are not able to get the ranks. So yes, yeah, so that's one thing. One thing. that i did want to do like i did not want to work somewhere after my sarship and then try to do the study thing and neither did i write any other because i was sure that if i wanted it was critical care i didn't want a cardiac anesthesia or anything so i kind of kept my options like very linear and yeah. just thought like i'll see how it comes that's also great i think finally like uh, if you want to point out two three things especially with respect to the topics that the student has to much to watch and would you enc- I mean encourage them to watch right at the beginning to just come into the stream what would you actually tell them when they starting off with their preparation what is ideal to be done in the first 10 or 15 days to just get into the stream and start moving so one is to make your basics strong so yeah. there are significant yeah. areas of overlap sir be it respiratory medicine anesthesia medicine so those overlap areas you need to be strong there's mm-hmm. no substitute so no substitute. to try to decipher those overlap areas and build your grip on it and gradually keep building the areas by looking at your level so that will be better rather than trying to cram and try to do some topic of which you have no serious idea and like i kind of took a slow strategy sir like i did not straight go to the neat ss videos i kind of finished Game your round two. once and then i built on it sir and i'm quite comfortable by watching uh, a same topic by two faculty because i told you that i don't make very serious notes like my notes are quite crisp and uh, things which needs to be marked up alone and i'm very comfortable in watching it in 3x also sir so that's how i'm quite comfortable so i think take one at a time and try to finish that and then you build on the rest like 
every day may not be the same sir but definitely it's going to get better so that's how you keep going that's I think I feel your strategy about. your strategy is about proper planning effective execution of that plan and having no hesitancy in working hard and being open to studying things which are not your postgraduate subject i think there are a lot of positives for everyone to take up because the other few of the other people who might have interviewed are people who actually got a very easy smooth sailing that means they they have they have actually come in with the idea joined md day one itself thinking tomorrow i will become cardiologist that kind of thing so easily they have actually sailed through but yours is a case where you you made a plan then executed the plan put the necessary hard work as invested time studied medicine studied pediatrics studied surgery studied ortho so i think you are setting a new example for anesthesia people to actually follow and i think large number of anesthesia people are very really get inspired out of this Is that the time duration? I can say that is like two to three months for sure. Just that you need to, like as you said, you need to be a little open. You need not feel yeah. that this does not belong to you. Like as an MBBS person, everything does belong. Everything to you. does so, belong to you. But after post graduation, someone who comes to me that okay, this is not my zone. If somebody talks to me about something in gynec, I will suddenly say this is not my zone. But actually, so I that start- one resistance is not there probably because I'm from the anesthesia background. Because most yeah. of my friends tend to be from gynec or yeah. ortho or surgery, yeah. so okay. you somehow tend to communicate with them with regard to the yeah. case going on. So yes. I was yes. kind of open, sir. I was not having okay. that inhibition That's that I'll be learning only what about, I know. That is something what I also have understood that anesthesia people actually know. a bit of all the subjects because you have seen all these guys in the theater you know medicine people in the icu you have seen lot physiology is your base so you basically know a bit of everything in contrast to most of the others who know only their subject so i think in that way anesthesia actually helps you and now in yeah, critical okay. also i think it might help you because critical care pgs now if you see have different backgrounds right they have pulmo background they have medicine background so here there again you will get the opportunity mostly to study with people who may have different backgrounds So I think yes, it's sir, like it's very very interesting because each person's background they are all coming to the same subject uh, is going to be really good because they are going to see the subject in different different ways because if I come to critical yes, care sir. the way I see may not be similar to how a pulmonology person sees so I think exactly so <laughs> so overall it was like really really different I mean what do you say interacting with you and I understand that right, you are a perfect model for a person who is just like very focused. Really, really focused on the job. Whatever happens, I think you will crack this. I think you've written I N I S is also you would have cracked because you you are like damn sure <laughs> you are going to crack. Whatever happens, you'll crack the exam. <laughs> that's that's really great. I think. I mean, do you do you have any tips for staying so motivated? I mean, outside this, I'm asking you. Like, do you have any tips for right. staying motivated? Sir, uh, I think right from childhood, I'm that one kind of a person that when somebody says that it's not meant for you, then I slightly <laughs> probe into that to find out like why is it not meant for me? Why is it not meant so, for you? Sir, yeah, and sir, I don't really go to those zones which are uh, kind of boring. I only take up things which I'm interested in. So yes, that sir. way, I'm focused, sir. I, I like, I know a couple of friends of mine who kept writing cardiac anesthesia and critical care at the same time, sir. But um, I somehow feel that critical care being so vast. and having so limited number of centers in the entire country and like generally you may not have an advantage if you don't do it from a well center is what i feel so i feel if you are quite sure of what you want to do then there's no <laughs> problem in your whole life if you are sure of what you want to do then there is no confusion but unfortunately so you, you should be lucky to... you you should be lucky also i agree that everything yeah. should fall into also... place people And only one percent of the people actually know what they want to do. So that is the whole point. If you really know what you what you want to do, then this. <laughs> right, sir. So that probably is there. So anyway, great. So hoping to see you in any of those two centers that are on CMC. I think a yes, um, like, lot of critical care people are on demand here because like we have very very few number of critical care physicians in the country. Especially if you take a state like Kerala and look at the hospital infrastructure. We have enough and more cardiologists. We have enough and more neurologists. But if you look at the number of critical care people we have, it is like very, very, very less. So hopefully, I think you will come back and then uh, you will be able to actually head the critical care unit in one of the top hospitals in South India or maybe even in Kerala. I think so. Okay. So uh, fantastic Thanks. talking to you. All the best. Thank you, sir. Same here, sir. Thank you so much. Okay.